Have you ever wondered where the sun's influence truly ends? Is there a wall, a sharp line that separates our solar system from the rest of the galaxy? Or does the sun's reach simply fade into the cosmic dark, blending with the stars around us? You might be surprised to learn that we've actually crossed that invisible edge. Twice. But what the Voyager spacecraft discovered out there wasn't a wall, or even a doorway. It was something far stranger. In this video, we'll explore the Sun's outer frontier, the heliosphere, and what happens where it collides with interstellar space. You'll see why NASA's next big mission, IMAP, might finally reveal where the Sun's bubble truly ends, and how it protects every living thing on Earth. Our entire solar system floats inside a massive, invisible bubble, the heliosphere. It's made of charged particles streaming outward from the sun at supersonic speeds, known as the solar wind. Every second, the sun ejects a storm of plasma, electrons, protons, and magnetic fields, creating a kind of wind that fills a vast region around it. That wind pushes against the thin gas that exists between the stars, like air inflating a balloon. The result is the heliosphere, a protective cocoon roughly 100 astronomical units wide, or 15 billion kilometers across, shielding us from dangerous galactic radiation. Without it, cosmic rays from deep space would constantly bombard our planet, stripping away our atmosphere and damaging DNA. So, in a very real sense, the heliosphere is the sun's shield, its force field. But every force meets resistance. As the solar wind rushes outward, it eventually slows down when it collides with the interstellar medium. That slowdown marks the first hint of a boundary, the termination shock. Here, the wind that was once supersonic drops below the speed of sound in plasma terms. It's a turbulent zone, where particles slam into interstellar material and create shock waves that ripple through the sun's outermost layer of influence. Voyager 1 hit this point in 2004. Voyager 2 crossed it in 2007. Both spacecraft detected sudden drops in solar wind speed, proof that they were entering new territory. Beyond the termination shock lies a region called the heliosheath, a kind of buffer zone where solar wind and interstellar gas mix. Think of it like the twilight between day and night. Here, the solar wind slows, swirls, and compresses, while magnetic fields twist and bend in chaotic patterns. This is not an empty void, it's a storm. Particles ricochet in all directions, and energy levels fluctuate constantly. It's in this zone that Voyager detected strange, low-frequency plasma waves, evidence of nearby turbulence and density changes. This region can stretch for billions of kilometers, and it's where the sun's influence begins to waver against the immense pressure of the galaxy itself. Finally, at the outer edge of the heliosheath lies the heliopause, the boundary where the solar wind's pressure and the interstellar medium's pressure balance each other out. Many people imagine it as a wall, like the skin of a bubble, but the truth is more complex. When Voyager 1 crossed this frontier in 2012, scientists expected a clean, obvious signal. Instead, the spacecraft detected a gradual change. Plasma density rose, magnetic field direction shifted slightly, and cosmic rays from outside the solar system flooded in. It wasn't an instant jump. The transition took weeks. A clear sign that the heliopause is not a hard stop, but a gradient. A slow blending of two different cosmic environments. You can think of it like the surface of a cloud, not the surface of a rock. Diffuse, uneven, and always changing shape. The sun's bubble breathes with the solar cycle, expanding and contracting every 11 years as solar activity rises and falls. That means the edge of the heliosphere is constantly moving, sometimes pushing outward, sometimes shrinking inward as the sun's magnetic heartbeat pulses through space. So what's on the other side? Beyond the heliopause lies true interstellar space. It's not empty, but filled with a thin mist of hydrogen, helium, dust, and magnetic fields that thread through the galaxy. Voyager 1 and 2 are now drifting through that region, over 24 billion kilometers from home, sending back faint whispers of what's out there. Their instruments detect denser plasma, cosmic rays that originate beyond our solar system, and occasional shock waves possibly caused by distant solar eruptions that echo across the heliopause years later. It's an incredible thought. We are finally sampling the space between stars, but even now we still don't fully understand where our space ends and theirs begins. The heliosphere isn't just a scientific curiosity. It's a life support system. 
By deflecting most high-energy cosmic rays, it keeps Earth's atmosphere and biology relatively safe. Changes in its strength could directly affect the radiation environment in deep space, something we'll need to understand if humans ever travel beyond Mars. Some scientists even believe that variations in the heliosphere's size over millions of years might influence Earth's climate and the rate of genetic mutations by altering cosmic ray exposure. So knowing where its edge lies isn't just an academic question. It could be key to understanding the conditions that make life possible. NASA launched the Interstellar Mapping and Acceleration Probe, or IMAP, to answer the biggest remaining questions. How exactly does the solar wind fade into interstellar space? Where does the boundary begin and how does it shift over time? IMAP will orbit near Earth, mapping the flow of particles at the very edge of the sun's influence. Its goal? To draw a detailed picture of the boundary we can't see, the fading edge between our solar bubble and the galaxy beyond. If you've seen my earlier video on NASA's IMAP mission, you'll know it could redefine what we mean by the edge of the solar system. If you haven't, check it out by clicking the link on the video because soon we might finally know where home truly ends and where interstellar space begins.